In this example, we're going to take an AOI circuit and convert it to its NOR equivalent. So over here on the left hand side, I have the NOR circuit as an inverter. I have the NOR equivalent of an OR circuit. And then I also have the NOR equivalent of an AND circuit. All right, so we're going to take all of these and replace them to their corresponding part over here. So here's the inverter. So I'm going to replace this inverter with the NOR inverter. So I'm going to come over here and draw the NOR. And the X is going to be the input for both inputs on this NOR. Okay. Next, we have this AND that we have to replace. All right, so this AND gets replaced with this as a NOR equivalent. So when we have to draw that out over here, just usually start out by drawing your gates, okay? And then make your connections. Don't necessarily make your connections as you go. So we're going to draw our three NOR gates over here. So the output of this inverter okay, is now the input to both of these for this particular NOR. The Y is going to be both inputs on this NOR. So now we have replaced this AND with this NOR equivalent AND. We're going to do the same thing here. There's another AND gate right here. We're going to replace it with its AND equivalent in NOR. So once again, go ahead and just draw out all three of your NORs that compose the AND. So the Y signal drives this input, which will drive both of these inputs on this NOR. The Z will drive both of these inputs on this NOR. So now we've replaced the inverter here. We've replaced this AND here. And we've replaced this AND right here. Next, we're going to replace this OR with its NOR equivalent. We'll do this in one of the different colors so we don't get too confused here, okay? So go ahead and draw its the OR as a NOR here. Okay, remember, this output is both of these inputs. I didn't draw it exactly very pretty there. And this is our output that we're going to calculate over here. Now, just like we did with NAND, we're going to look for some double inversions here to help simplify this NOR circuit down. So if you can, we don't have any double inversions going on here, so this guy's got to stay the same. No double inversions here. But right here, we have a double inversion. Okay, notice this is the same input, same input. This is called a double inversion. So we can cancel the double inversions out of this circuit. It's not a whole lot this time, but it's enough to help. So what we're going to do is cancel those, and we'll redraw our circuit now with what's left up here. All right? So the X now feeds into this guy. So we're going to draw this NOR over here. Y doesn't change. Okay, Y still got to go through this NOR and feed into both inputs. The X has to feed into both inputs on this one now. Okay, so that's this piece right here. Is here. Oh, I'm sorry, this does not feed into both inputs. Let's redraw this guy over here. If I redraw this, this X has to go into 1 
and the output of the Y has to go into the other. The output of this Y is going to go right in there. Okay? So that's this equivalent right here. Now, this guy didn't change, so we have to redraw him exactly as he lies. Okay, so you're going to draw your three nors. All right, pull in from the Y. This Y is both inputs, and the Z is both inputs over here for this gate. Okay, so this one we didn't change. Up here, we just have to redraw this OR piece. getting to be some sloppy looking ores, but even though we do all nors on here. And both inputs there. So this guy is going to come over here and this guy is going to feed here. And we're going to have our output. So let's double check to make sure everything goes through. When you're doing a nor, this one might get a little complicated. We might want to do some simplification on the way. Over here this becomes X or we don't know yet we got to go through this Y one first so this is Y or Y which is Y and this output right here is Y bar this is X going in right here so here we have X or Y bar so this is X or Y bar and this inversion tells us we got to put a bar over all of that okay Let's go down here real quick. This is Y or Y, and this is inverted. This is Y bar right here. We have Z or Z, and then it's inverted. This is Z bar. So when we step to this level right here, we have Y bar or Z bar, and then that's inverted. So this is Y bar or Z bar, and it's inverted, so these guys get a bar over them. I recommend right now simplifying a little bit so it'll help you through this process and there's less the Morgan that you got to go through at the end. Remember this guy simplifies to you break the line change the sign so this becomes X bar Y double bar okay so this is essentially X bar Y okay double bar remember cancels. If we simplify this piece over here same rule applies break the line change the sign this becomes Y double bar Z double bar which is essentially Y Z okay because the double bars cancel. So what's going in right here on this guy? What's going in right here is X bar Y and YZ. That's what's going in right here. Okay? So now we put it through its OR. We have X bar or Y right here. X bar and Y or we have Y and Z and that's all inverted because of this piece right here. Okay? So now as we send it through here one more time, we have all of this stuff essentially getting doubled up. So we have X bar, Y, or Y bar, Z bar, or that same exact thing. So we know that that's what's going to go through over here. So what's coming through is X bar, Y, or Y, Z, and we have one large bar across. And then this inversion, after going through that OR piece, is going to do that and give us a double bar. But we know if we simplify using De Morgan's theorem, the double bar cancels out. So here we are essentially left with X bar Y or Y, Z, which is exactly what we had over here. Now, what's the point of all this? If we take a look 
at the AOI circuit. We have an inverter, we have two AND gates, and one OR gate. Essentially, that's three different chips. Okay, three different chips. We have to have an inverter, we have to have an AND, and we have to have an OR. If we come over here, okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here we have seven gates. And we know that there are four gates on each chip. So these seven gates equates to two chips. So cost-wise, it's more affordable for us to do a NOR than to do an AOI here. It looks a little messier, wiring-wise. However, you know, even if this was 10 cent chips, all right, it costs us 20 cents to produce this. It costs us 30 cents to produce that. That doesn't seem like much, but if we need to produce this same circuit on the scale of a million or a half a million, those dollars and cents add up. So that's why NAND and NOR are such an advantage is the cost goes down compared to your standard AOI circuit.